and how you apply the compost. Uh, any farmer can just go and dump coarse poop on their crops whenever they wanted to. With organic certification, it has to be at least 90 to 120 days, depending on the type of crop. You can't, you can't just put it on the week beforehand and hope to get a whole bunch of great looking spans. You have to wait three or four months before you actually crop. Is the pork more tender with the vegetable than with the um, I, I guess I don't know. I think it's, I think it's got better flavor, definitely. I think the, the being tender in that is really how you cook it. Um, it's definitely got less, it has a flavor that, um, I don't know if you've ever had one grown pork, but it's, it doesn't taste like it does, like the grocery store pork does. Um, there's, there's a lot of, um, just a lot of to it. I would say it's more tender, but yes, I haven't had this for pork in a long time. So I don't really know. Do you sell it before? Right now, we sell the pork by halves. We call it on the hook. You have to buy the actual animal, and then we slaughter it to your specifications. The problem with organic certification of meat around here is there's no organic butcher. Um, it's, it's very similar to organic dairy where, where if you're going to have an organic pig butchered, you have to take it to the slaughterhouse. They have to be the first pig slaughtered on that day. They have to clean everything after and before and after that, that particular pig is taken care of. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that goes with it. They have to keep everything completely separate from the conventional pigs. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it's a lot of work and there are not many butchers around here who want to do that much work. And they also have to be inspected by the government and get their own organic certification. So my pork, even though it's still technically certified organic, it's only up until the point of butchering because after I send it to the butcher, they can't even consider it organic anymore. Is this even though it is? Yes, because the butcher is not. So we sell our pork by the half. Um, you can buy a half or a whole pig, and at that point, I mean, for me, it's the whole thing. But we're, what we're going to try this year is we are going to do some retail cuts, even though, but we won't be able to label them as we're going to. So I'll let that be. Did I answer your question? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes? What would the beef that you have there, that you're doing at lower temperature? How about the pork? I'm sorry. With the beef, with the grass fed beef, you have to cook it at lower temperature. I guess we're it the same way as I used to. Uh, usually slow and slow and low is good for any grass-based product, especially chickens um, and beef. Uh, the pork I, I usually do, if I'm doing pork chops, I'll do them at 325 or 350 for half hour, 47 minutes. They come out great. Somebody got a question over here. I was going to say uh, some kosher butchers kind of have to follow that same yeah. procedure. Yeah. It's very similar. It's very similar, kind of but it is separate. It's a separate certification, I guess you call it. And, and like in the big cities like Buffalo or the Euro, they don't, they don't have the... the they um, probably do, but that's not worth my oh, okay. gas money to drive up there. No, no, no. <laughs> I have plenty of customers who are happy to buy half a hog. So, we're a community, we're a community supported farm. And I think community supporting farm is actually a two-way street. Uh, the community supports us, but we also need to support the community. So some of the things that we do is we bring in interns from, from the local colleges, from SUNY Fredonia and from JCC, and they work with us on various projects. Uh, some of the interns have done um, like soil sampling for me. They've also done projects for um, like helping me develop a network of farmers and getting databases set up uh, for the county. Um, lots of lots of different things. Something, a lot of times they just help me in the garden, help me planting things, doing seeds, and just general farm projects. Um, another thing we do is we work with the Chautauqua Works Program through their summer employment, right? Their summer, their youth summer employment project. Uh, so we um, we hire kids, high school kids usually, who come and help out at the farm for probably 40 hours a week, at least actually 30 hours. And they learn job skills. They're, they're at risk. These, these are kids that have been deemed out at risk, and so they come to our farm. They learn job skills. They learn how to how to work. Um, they learn how to manage their money with their paychecks. They learn 
a lot of employment skills that they wouldn't learn otherwise by just sitting by, by being on the streets or some other thing. Um, so we we bring in interns, we bring in kids from the Chicago Works program. We work with our local food pantries and cherry Creek and South Dayton. They do a lot of our, our products. Um, and it's not the leftover yucky stuff. We actually give them a portion of the good stuff. And, uh, you know, whatever they need, we, we try to help them out with. Also, how long have you worked um, with the Chautauqua Works program with the kids? This would be our our fourth year, I think. And I don't know that we're getting any this year. I think the okay. funding's been extremely cut. Oh, um, that's but great. we've had we've had one, three groups of kids. We've had three groups of kids over the past few years. So. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then last year's group wanted to come back, but like I said, I don't know if that's going to happen. Did yeah. you mention 4-H? Pardon? Did you mention 4-H kids? Or? Chautauqua Works. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the 4-H kids coming? No. no. Um, I could. No one's approached me about it. Yeah, because there's, there's a number, <laughs> yeah. number on there. Yeah. Uh, what else would you guys like to know about? <laughs> The little garlic seeds that are in the box over there, the little curly cute things, those are actually the top of the garlic plant. And if you can find it, it's ever grown garlic. But you, get, you usually buy the garlic ball, right? That grows underneath the soil, it sends up a stalk. You actually plant it in the fall and you harvest it the next summer. So it sends up the stalk, a whole bunch of leaves, and then it sends up a flower stalk because all plants want to flower, that's how they breathe and make more, more plants. Uh, it sends up the stalk, which is actually that curly cute thing that the skate that's in the box over there. Um, and at the end of it is a flower bud. Okay. So, so the garlic plant is about this high, you've got this thing on top of it, and you just send it right here. Um, this is actually the flower blossom, they'll actually get much, much larger if you leave it on the plant. And eventually it will actually open up and it'll be uh, a flower that looks kind of like a, a ball with a whole bunch of spikes, spikes to it, yeah. Um, they're really pretty. <laughs> but the problem is, is if you leave these on, all the energy goes to make the flower and you get a really small ball. So that's why we cut them off. We cut them off because you want big balls of garlic rather than flowers. Um, these are really good substitute because garlic doesn't come in until July, then you have to let it cure. So a lot of times you don't actually get your fresh garlic until August. So if you have a craving for garlic, these will, these will help you meet your craving. Um, just chop them up like you would scallions or green onions, uh, sprinkle them in whatever you want to. You can use it from the end, end to end if you use this part. Um, there's a bunch of recipes in there. Uh, they're, they're very good. They'll keep in the fridge, take them home, put them in the fridge. Probably a plastic bag would be better and they'll last you for, for quite a while. Yes. We knew about the garlic scape. We've seen garlic scape before, mm -hmm. and we have some friends who are in, um, where does Fran live? Michigan? Thank you. Sure. They have a farm, and it's uh, in, what, just like we, and we told them about um, organic garlic scapes, and I think they're going to uh, investigate that possibility. Um, one thing that I was concerned with is, I don't get my uh, garlic from all these anymore. The garlic comes from China, yeah. and there was a fear with China, I believe, yeah. and, other heavy and other heavy metals. So we feel better about buying our garlic organic and local. Yeah. Um, that's, that's an interesting thing. Even even with organic standards from country to country, the standards are different. Um, I always say it's better by locally, at least in the United States. If the closer to home you can get, the better. Uh, if you know the farmer, eat them more better. You can ask them questions. You can go visit their farm, you can taste their produce and say, hey, why is this like that? Or, you know, what, what, what is it that you do to get produce like this? Um, so I said, most at home, the better. And, uh, I, I like our, like, you know, I like the ball, you know. But uh, the ball on the bottom is almost water. Uh, they, they do need a lot of water, and it's been a very dry summer. And they're also very heavy feeders, so I did get an empty compost. Uh, I put them in the uh, papers, but I got them rolling, but they're all drying up already, so I sold them.